It's not what you say. It's how you say it that's most important. Our gestures, our expressions, where we put our hands when we talk. All of these are parts of our communication style. And all experts agree that body language is the most important part to communication. Now let me break down what is really communication about. It is about getting your ideas, the things that you care about in your head, and getting it into the minds of others. And I would argue, with social media being so important and video, hello, right, being so important to social media, that body language is more important today than ever before. Now, three of the best books I've ever read on body language are this guy, the definitive book to body language, Alan and Barbara Peace, 27 million copies sold worldwide, right? Incredible. Then you have The Lie Detecting 101 by Dr. David Craig. This is great. This guy consults with UK, US, Australian, many other international security agencies. And then you have one of the top rated body language books on Amazon right now, what everybody's saying, Joe Navarro. And what I wanna do is break down the top lessons I learned reading each one of these because I know body language is important to you. Now let's start with this guy. I love this. And by the way, <laughs> no shade on these, uh, these two books here, but if you could only read one of these books, this is the book to read because it gives a good overview of body language. Now, what Joe talks about in this book, most importantly, is the importance of our torso and reading other people by looking at their torso. So you can't see this, but I've got a door here. So I'm in the library in my house and there's a door right here to exit. Now, if I was standing in this position, right, it would suggest that I want to go to that door and get out of this library, right? So if I'm talking to you and I'm pointed kind of this way, I'm tilted this way, my torso is tilted this way, it means I probably want out. The same thing if I would to reverse it, right? If I'm pointed inside, it means that I probably don't have an interest in leaving at the moment. Where we position our torso, where we're pointing it, is very indicative of what we wanna do or where we wanna go. It also, as Joe breaks it down, is it's indicative of if we are comfortable or uncomfortable. So think of all the people who stand like this, right? If I were standing like here, you know, talking to you with the books like this, or let's say that I had a podium in front of me and I'm giving a lecture and I keep the podium right in front of me, locked in, I don't go, it suggests that I'm probably a little uncomfortable versus if I'm talking to you, as I hopefully have been, right, with the books off to my side, because I do feel comfortable, right? You're in my house, you know, I feel comfortable, so the books are off to the side. Or if there's a podium in front of me, but then I step to the side of the podium to speak, right? It suggests that I am comfortable. Blocking the torso, uncomfortable. Not blocking, comfortable. Wherever the torso is pointed, it shows our direction of interest. Now, what's great about this is think if you are in a business meeting, right? And you see everyone's torso pointed towards a particular person. Chances are that person is going to be the most powerful in the room, right? The torso, incredibly, incredibly important to understand and read, and that's what Joe does in this book. Great read, right? The next up is the definitive book to body language, Alan Barber Peace. Remember, 27 million copies sold. Something must be right about this. Some of the best illustrations I've seen in a body language book, but what they do in this book is really interesting, right? We always hear about the importance of building rapport and the importance of the first few moments of interacting with someone. What they say in this book is that the first few minutes, right, probably between the minutes of three and four, is when most people will put us in one of three boxes. Now remember, this is interacting with someone, this is you watching me on this video, so you know they could be watching you on, on social media video, they could be watching you on stage, but within about three to four minutes, everyone, every single person you meet, will put you into one of three boxes. What are those boxes? Box one is that they think you are dominant. In other words, they don't want to deal with you. They're scared of you. They'll be very cautious of you. You don't want to be in that box. The second is they'll put you in the box of being submissive. You don't want to be in that box either because they're thinking they can dominate you. The third box is the box that we all want to be in. That's the box of equality. That's the box of, okay, you know, I could do that deal with you. I could date you, right? I could have a conversation with you, right? I can deal with you. The box of equality is where we want to be. But unfortunately, because of our body language and other nonverbal and verbal communication styles, we end up placing ourselves in boxes A or B. 
and we can't optimize our relationships, right? What he, what he and she, because it's a husband-wife team, what they do in this book is they break down the body language techniques we could use to manipulate those interactions. And I say manipulate in a positive way, right? But manipulate those interactions so that people will always put us in that third box, the box of equality. This awesome read, especially if you are interacting with a lot of people for business reasons, right? Negotiation, etc. Then we have, last up we've got, and I, I love, love, love this book, right? Dr. David Craig, the reason why I love this book, Lie Detecting 101, is because, let's face it, we all wanna know if people are lying to us. Like, are you, are you lying to me right now? Like, you, you wanna know, right? In all relationships, business, platonic, social, you wanna know. But what Dr. David Craig says in this book is that very few people can detect if someone is lying. Less than 10% of the world can truly detect it. It's very, very difficult to do. But he breaks down, he, he breaks down some great techniques. Now, one of my favorite techniques from this book is something called asking control questions and baselining, right? Asking control questions and baselining. All a control question is, is a question that you know the answer to. So let's say that you're at a business meeting, right? You're on a date. You start asking questions that you already know the answer to, right? So you know that, you know, these are easy questions. They're going to give you the truth about these things. Now, while you're asking the question, what you're really doing is you're observing. You're observing how quickly they're blinking their eyes. You're observing what they do with their hands, right? What they do with their feet, because blinking your eyes and your hands and your feet movement, these are very hard to control. You're also listening to the pace of their voice, right? Is it quick? You're listening to the tone and inflections. Does it go up and down or is it more so monotone? Is it a slow pace? You take into consideration all of those characteristics of their baseline and you say, okay, this is what happens when someone is telling the truth. The person I'm talking to, right? This is how they react when they're telling the truth. Then you start asking the real questions. And when you're asking the real questions, you then start observing. Do, you know, do, do they start blinking faster or slower, right? Do their hands and feet start doing different things, you know? Does their voice, you know, uh, start to, do they talk real high like this, <laughs> you know, right? Um, you know, or do they go, you know, very white, baritone on you, right? Do they, you know, what do they do differently? That's what you're looking for. If there are drastic differences between what you've observed when you're asking the real questions and the baseline, they could be lying to you, right? Brilliant stuff from Dr. Craig. Uh, he, he also lists a whole bunch of other techniques. This is an awesome book. The bottom line here is that body language is critical. And here's the reason why. We all want to have better careers. We want to have better lives. But in order to do that, we have to be better at communication. Now remember, that means that we just have to be better of take better with taking our ideas and putting our ideas into the minds of others. But how do we do that? Well, that's what communication is. But the vast majority, 93% of communication is nonverbal. And most of that nonverbal is body language. So if you want to be a better communicator, right, that means that you have to be better with your body language. And to be better with your body language, that means that you have to develop and master body language skills. Please, you want a better career, and I know you want a better life, get better at developing your body language skills.